1996, I was a first year student at the University of Stellenbosch and I didn't know God, I didn't have a living relationship with, with Christ, although I did go to a traditional church. And in that season, in my first year, one of the seniors in the hostel came to me and he said to me, Andre, I, I had a, a dream last night. And in this dream, God appeared to me and told me to invite you to church. Man, I thought the guy's weird. <laughs> Dreams, God speaking, it wasn't in my frame of reference. Although I found myself going to a, a shofar church and uh, that Saturday evening I committed my life to Christ. I respond on the altar call and the pastor came down and he came and stood next to me. I closed my eyes. I was trying to blend in with the other people. And then he just said these words. He said to me, give in to Jesus. The next moment I felt fire coursing through my body, the fire of the Holy Spirit. I received a touch from God. And that day I realized God is real. And everything changed from that moment onwards. I started uh, on a journey with the Holy Spirit and growing in my relationship with the Holy Spirit. But I realized that God called me. He called me to himself and in the same way he calls you to himself and into relationship with him and his Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit is the one who reveals the Father and who reveals Jesus to us. So if you want to really know God, then grow in your relationship with the Holy Spirit. So in this module, which is about the Holy Spirit, I'm going to share stories with you to stir your faith and to reveal to you the reality of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. And I'm, I'm trusting that as I share these stories that your desire, your hunger for more of God would be stirred as well. So in this session, we're gonna answer this question, who is the Holy Spirit? Now, I have a great passion for the Holy Spirit. And over the last 20 plus years, I've discovered that the key to effective ministry, the key to seeing lives changed depends upon how much I surrender to Him, to the Holy Spirit, to God. And so I want to invite you on this journey with me and to open your heart and to surrender completely to God, the Holy Spirit. Okay, so the Holy Spirit is the third person in the Trinity. So we've got the Father, then Jesus, then the Holy Spirit. So where is Father God? Father God is in heaven. And then where's Jesus? Well, he's ascended, seated at the right hand of the Father. He's also in heaven. So who's here? Who's with us now? Well, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit that we might not be orphans, but that we might know God and be empowered by God to see the kingdom of God come on earth. So bottom line, you want to grow in your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Now, I've learned over the years that, you know, Dead religion is basically where, there where the Holy Spirit is not actively at work. And the moment the Holy Spirit starts working and moving in our midst, dead religion is broken and the, the life of Christ flows into that environment. That's when the Christianity becomes exciting. That's when we feel alive. That's when we encounter more of God. And that's when lives are truly changed. Okay, so let's, let's get into the house. How is this relevant to us, the Holy Spirit? Well, this, this whole topic about power and powerlessness is very important. You see, without God, we are we're pitiful. With God, we're powerful. It's not us, but it's God through us. And unfortunately for many Christians, because they don't have an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit or they sort of ignore the Holy Spirit, they find themselves simply pitiful and not powerful. And, and I believe it's God's will for each one of us to be full of the Holy Spirit and therefore empowered by God. So God is the source of all power in the universe. He's omnipotent. He has the power of life and death. There is no other source of power. Now from the outset, we should state three very important principles. Number one, the Holy Spirit is a person, not a force. It's not like Star Wars, the force be with you. No, 
He's a person and you can grow in your relationship with the Holy Spirit. You can grieve him. You can, you can honor him. You know, so I often when I pray for people and a miracle happens or they get set free or healed. Then I say, thank you, Holy Spirit. I honor Jesus. I honor the Father, but I also honor God, the Holy Spirit. He's a person, not a force. Secondly, the Holy Spirit is here to complete the mission of God not merely give us various spiritual experiences. Now, this is important to understand. The, the end goal is not just to have an experience with God. Although it's wonderful to encounter God, to feel His love, to feel His peace, that's wonderful. But the goal is to know Him and to make Him known. The goal is, God, I want to be filled with all of you so that I can love people better, so I can see your kingdom come, so I can partner with you in seeing the Great Commission fulfilled. So I, I, one of the stories I'm thinking of is a, is a guy called, uh, his name is Aviwe. Now, he was an atheist, and he uh, came to our church in East London, in South Africa, and he, he didn't know God and I connected a bit with him. The following Sunday, he responded on the altar call, you know, praying the sinner's prayer, committing his life to Christ. Then I went to see him at his home. And as I walked through the front door, he shook my hand and said, Pastor, I've prayed your little prayer, but the lights have not come on yet. And I said, oh man, don't worry, all good. Um, so I shared with him about salvation. Then I shared with him about the Holy Spirit and specifically the baptism or the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And then I saw, man, I need to go. So Aviwe, can I quickly pray for you? And he said, sure. So he stood up and he opened his hand, closed his eyes. And I prayed for him. I prayed that Jesus would baptize him or fill him with the Holy Spirit. And so he shared this with me later, but he said as his eyes were closed, he was standing like with his hands open, he, he saw in his, with his eyes closed, he saw a light far off and then a light coming closer. And then he saw a light moving away again and then coming closer. And he was like, what is this pastor doing? He's, why is he shining a flashlight in my eyes? And I, I didn't have a flashlight. But so this light was, was going away and coming closer. And then I prayed, Jesus, baptize him, immerse him in the Holy Spirit. And the next moment, all that I saw was that he was standing like this. Next moment, he went, he, he like fell backwards. He's like, ah, ah, you know, and he sat down in his chair and he was like shaking and, he's, he's, and, he, and he was sitting like this shaking and tears were running down his face. And he was saying, it's real, it's real, <laughs> you know, because he experienced this glorious light flooding into him, God, the light of all lights, flooding into him. And that day, an atheist was transformed in a believer. It was such a beautiful moment, you know, and it was just it's wonderful because he said to me when he shook my hand at the beginning of that, that meeting, and you know, he said to me, Pastor, the lights haven't come on yet. And then the light came. The glory of God flooded into him and he was changed and he was set free. In the same way, you know, you might not experience God like that, but God knows each one of us and he speaks our language and we can encounter him in a variety of ways. Sometimes it's something as small as you're reading the scriptures and the word of God comes alive to you and you're changed. Now that's a God encounter. You know, so, so, the, 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 so the Holy Spirit is here to complete the mission of God. And so you and I are called to partner with the Holy Spirit in seeing his kingdom come. The third thing is that the Holy Spirit is holy. And sometimes people get this confused, like, oh, Holy Spirit, presence of God, and all of that, but they don't live lives in obedience to Christ. They don't live holy lives. If you want to know God, and if you want the Holy Spirit to truly fill you, Obey God, follow Him, and allow the Spirit, whose name is holy, to purify you. You see, you can't be holy without God. You can't obey God without His power. And so His grace comes, and He empowers you to obey Him and follow Him. So understand those three things. The Holy Spirit is a person, is here to empower us, to see God's mission fulfilled, and He is holy. Okay, so this was a... A young man, his name is uh, Evan Roberts, and he was used mightily by God 
in the Welsh revival in 1905, there was a mighty outpouring in Wales. And even Roberts had profound encounters with God. He said basically for, for three months, every night, he felt as if he ascended into heaven and he was changed. And he felt God birthed this in him that there's a mighty move of the Spirit coming that's going to impact the world. And that's exactly what happened. More than 100,000 people committed their lives to Christ in one year because of this revival in Wales. Uh, after this revival, they say drunkenness re reduced with more than 50%. And the greater Britain was impacted. More than a million people committed their lives to Christ. You see, there's the, the experience of God and then there's the outflow, lives turning to Jesus, lives set free. And so even shares in, in this letter that he wrote in 1905, I'm just going to highlight a few things. But he said, this is my work as he, God, has pointed it out to me. His spirit came to me one night when upon my knees I asked him for guidance. And five months later, I was baptized with the spirit. And that's often how it works. It's like you, you, God starts to work in you. Maybe you commit your life to Christ. And then sometime later, you experience a, a significant increase of God's presence in your life, which is like a baptism or infilling of the Spirit. In my case, I commit my life to Christ. And then about three months later, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And then I started to pray in tongues. Now, praying in tongues is your spirit praying to God who is spirit. Spirit to spirit, beautiful, intimate connection with God. So um, even continues uh, and he says, He has led me as he will lead all those who, conscious of their human weakness, lean upon him as a children upon a father. I know that the work which has been done through me is not due to any human ability that I possess. It is his work and to his glory. And that's so important. We can do nothing without God. We're pitiful, as I said, but with him, all things are possible. Later on, he, uh, he says, I wish no personal following, only the world for Christ. And you know, when the Holy Spirit gets a hold of your heart, everything within you burns with a passion to know him and to make him known. You've got, your heart will burn for the lost when the Holy Spirit gets a hold of you. And then right at the end of the letter, or later on in the letter, it says, I beseech all those who confess Christ to ask him today upon their knees if he has not some work for them to do now. God has a work for you to do now. Ask him, pray, say, Lord, what do you call me to do in the local church, out through, outside the local church? What, what, is, what has God planned for you? Because God wants to continue his ministry through your life. And then right at the end of the letter it says, thousands upon thousands will do more than we have accomplished as God gives them power. That power is by the Holy Spirit. This is my earnest faith. If the churches will but learn the great lesson of obedience to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Obedience, obedience, obedience. And, and that must be our cry. That's part of the holiness. The, 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 it's not about asking or telling God what he must do. It's about partnering with God, saying, Lord, what are you doing today? This is what I, I often do. Any, every service, every meeting, I ask God before the time, God, what are you doing? I want to partner with you in what you are doing. So this great Welsh revival, along with the Azusa Street revival in Los Angeles, served as the catalyst for the Pentecostal charismatic movement as we know it today. Both revivals not only changed its respective nations, but also changed the world. Their stories of miracles and mighty works of the Spirit are still with us today. And God does not call us just to ponder upon the past. He wants to do it again today. He wants to do it in your life, and He wants to do it through your life. So getting to the heart of the matter. One of the best ways of getting to know the Holy Spirit better is to study how Jesus related to the Holy Spirit in the Gospels. And then later we're gonna look at the book of Acts as well. First important thing that we see in the Gospel of John, the Holy Spirit is an endowment from Jesus for the mission of God. So the Holy Spirit is empowerment, the Holy Spirit is a gift from God, it's God giving himself to us. But what is this power for? 
First of all, when the Holy Spirit empowers you, you receive boldness. Suddenly you're not afraid so much of what people think and you wanna tell people about Jesus. And then secondly, God calls us not only to share about him and about the kingdom of God, but also to demonstrate the kingdom of God. So that power confirms the word of God so that Jesus might be glorified. You know, so we did a, a revival conference in a, in a church um, in Manaus, in, uh, in Brazil, a large church. It was a great honor for us to go there. And I went with this message. I, I wanted to proclaim who Jesus is and that he's still working mightily today. I mean, the first day sitting at the breakfast table with a senior pastor, uh, he shared with us that his wife, uh, for the last three months, when she would just tilt her head backwards, she would black out. So we prayed for her. She was instantly healed through Jesus Christ. And we prayed for the senior pastor. Both, the, both of his knees were healed. He could play soccer again, praise God. And the lady that was working in the house, she had a, a tormenting spirit in her life and she was set free. Man, that was just breakfast. It was amazing what God was doing. And that first night of the revival uh, conference, I proclaimed that Jesus is still the healer. And at the end of the evening, I said to the guys, okay, now we're gonna demonstrate to you that Jesus is still powerful. Thinking back of it, I still think I was crazy. But I stepped out and I basically asked, okay guys, if you've got, right now, you've got pain in your body, you've got sickness in your body, you can feel the pain right now, raise your hand. Man, half of the place raised their hands. I chose five people, I called them forward onto the stage, a sixth lady ran up, she was like, you are gonna pray for me. So she came onto the stage and then my team stood behind them and then, because I've, I've realized the key, if you want lives to be changed, God needs to be tangibly present. So we prayed and we said, God, Holy Spirit, come, presence of God, come and touch them. I'll never forget one of the most profound moments of my life. Within two to three minutes, it felt like a wave, an invisible wave of the Spirit came from the audience and flooded into these six, six people. They, they fell to the ground as if a wave crashed into them. Some of them went down screaming, being delivered from demonic oppression. Within a few minutes, five of them were completely healed from many, many years of stuff. The sixth one took about 10 minutes of praying for her before she was healed. Man, I was blown away with what God did. But you should have seen the impact on this church. It was like suddenly... They experienced not only someone proclaiming the word of God, but also demonstrating that the God of the Bible is the same still today. Jesus hasn't changed. You know, and, and this is powerful verse in Acts 19 verse 10 is, is that they list a whole lot of miracles that, were, that happened through the, the apostle Paul and other believers. And then it says, and then the word of God grew mightily and prevailed. The word of God grew mightily and prevailed. It's like suddenly there's a, a reverence for God and for his word when people experience the, the, the signs and wonders that Jesus still does. And this is not for the special or for the elite. I tell you, God wants to work mightily in you and through you. Now the Holy Spirit is intimately connected with the ministry of Jesus. Now that time in Manaus, we saw about 400 people physically healed. We saw many people delivered from demonic oppression. Many people turned into Christ. It was incredible what God did. And he wants to continue to do that. Now people wrestle with this, you know, when they hear these stories and they think, man, maybe Andre is special. No, I'm not special. It's not about, it's not for the elite or the special. It is for the anyone who would desire more of God in them, you know? So let that be stirred in you. Now the Holy Spirit empowered Jesus for ministry. And Jesus is the one who gives the Holy Spirit to those who believe in him. So look at this verse in John 1. It says there, I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove and it remained on him. That's on Jesus. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, this is John the Baptist speaking, he on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and borne witness that this is the Son of God. Now this is critical. 
It's critical for you and me to understand that Jesus didn't do his miracles as God. Philippians 2 says he laid down his Godhood. Yes, he was God, but he laid down his God power when he walked on the earth. He was a perfect man. Obviously, he was still God, but he laid down his power. He was a perfect man. He had no sin. And therefore, the fullness of the Holy Spirit could rest upon him. There are no evidence of any miracles before the day that Jesus was baptized in water and then the heavens opened, the Holy Spirit came upon him like a dove and from, from that day onwards, signs and wonders uh, happened through his life. So Jesus did the miracles by the Holy Spirit. You see, Jesus is our example. He comes to show us what a son or a daughter of God looks like. Jesus is our example, morally speaking, but also in terms of ministry. And... Uh, you see, and, and I think sometimes this is where the challenge comes in, you know, we think, but, but Jesus was perfect, you know, he, he had no sin. So where does this leave you and me, you know? We're sinners, we make mistakes, none of us are perfect. So how on earth can we then also move in the power of the Spirit? And I'm gonna give you that answer in a moment. You know, um, Jesus, the one that baptizes us in the Spirit, because the Spirit empowers and prepares us for the mission of God. Acts 1 verse 8 says this. Um, he, uh, Jesus speaking to his disciples just before he ascended. He says, And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem. He ordered them. It's not like a suggestion. He, he commanded them. Guys, you can't do this without the Holy Spirit. I'm going. But you need the Spirit, the fullness of the Spirit in your life. He says, But go and wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And then in verse eight, it says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. That is a promise for each one of us. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Okay, it's not only for the apostle, but each one of us. So we need to receive the Holy Spirit. Then secondly, the Holy Spirit is the giver of life. Genesis 1 verse 2, it says, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. There was darkness, there was chaos, there was disorder, but the Holy Spirit was hovering there. And when the Word of God came and He said, let there be light, the Holy Spirit flooded in and empowered the Word and there was light. It's the same today. When you and I call upon the name of Jesus, when we proclaim the Word of God, the Holy Spirit's hovering there and He's ready to confirm the Word and to move forth and to change lives. And so the Holy Spirit is brooding and ready to cause new life to flood forth. So we see this in John chapter 3. Jesus speaks to Nicodemus, the, 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 one of the leaders of the Jews of the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees. And then Jesus says to him, or, or Nicodemus says, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. So Nicodemus saw the signs and wonders and he realized, man, God is with this man. And then Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Later says he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And he says, you need to be born again. This is one of the greatest things that the Holy Spirit does. You know, I mean, I still want to see someone raised from the dead. That would be awesome. But the greatest miracle that we can ever see is when one hard heart becomes soft, when one soul turns to Jesus. And this is the greatest work of the Holy Spirit. When he moves upon somebody's heart, someone's spirit, and he causes him to be born again, newly created. And so we need to celebrate every soul, every heart that turns to Jesus. This is the great work of God. And the Lord wants to do that in you, and God wants to do that through you. I tell you, one of the greatest highlights of my life is when I lead somebody to Jesus and I see significant change, the tears running down their, their face as they encounter the living God. Just this past Sunday, I prayed with a man and his life was radically transformed as he encountered the living God. Not just a dry, boring little prayer, but encountering the love of God. And God wants to do this through you. So the Holy Spirit is with us to create new life in us. And then thirdly and lastly, the Holy Spirit is the helper. 
<laughs> I heard someone say, the Holy Spirit is a genius. In other words, he's the best in anything. He's God. You know, so the Holy Spirit wants to be, he's ready and he wants to help you in your life. He's the, he's the best designer, programmer. He's best at medicine. He's best at relationships. He's best at decision making. He's best at finances. He's best at doing business. He's best at loving people. He is a genius. And I believe God is wanting to flood into your life. Why not open the door today? Why not say, Holy Spirit, come with me to work. Holy Spirit, come with me into my marriage, into my home, into my parenting. Holy Spirit, I need you. The Holy Spirit is God. He wants to empower you to overcome in life and to glorify the name of Jesus. He is holy and he is your helper. So open the door and welcome him in to your life. Take 10 minutes to reflect on and discuss this session's key Bible passage together with others in your class. If you are watching on your own, take a few minutes to reflect on the key Bible passage by yourself. Studying a key Bible passage. Let's look at John 16, verse 4 to 15. But I've said these things to you, that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told them to you. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I've said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. So concerning the discussion, this passage in John describes the role of the Holy Spirit as helper. Now go through the three roles of the Holy Spirit above and see which verses fit in with which category. Number one, the Holy Spirit as endowment by Jesus. Number two, the Holy Spirit as giver of life. And number three, the Holy Spirit as helper. The Holy Spirit is given by Jesus to us. He leaves us as a helper who gives us life. So let me pray and just ask God to come and guide you and help you. So Father, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus, that you left, but you did not leave us alone. You sent your Holy Spirit to empower us, to equip us so that the name of Jesus Christ can be glorified in the earth. God, right now we open the door in every home, in every heart for your Holy Spirit to come in, to guide us, to lead us and to see the name of Christ glorified. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Take 15 minutes to reflect on and discuss the following points together with others in the class. If you are watching on your own, take a few minutes to reflect on the points by yourself. You can find the discussion points in your Bible School handbook. Look out for the Living the Word sections in each session.